Hello, everybody. We got super sketch going on right now. As the frame is bent on this side, it's you can see it goes up. And it's gotten to the point where I might have to do something about it instead of just driving it and ignoring it because it keeps lifting up every time I go off roading. I think it's bending more and more. See where it bent here? Yeah. Bummer. I guess it's time. You can see where it's bent right there. A little dimple in there. I took it to a couple places to see if they would do it for me, but uh, all three denied me. They said no way and laughed at me. So my other option is to buy a whole new frame and completely disassemble this thing and reassemble it on a new frame or the new used frame from Marketplace if I can find one, which I'm sure I could find one, but that's a lot of work, but I'm uh, YouTube certified, so I'll just bend it back myself and reinforce it. I got nothing to lose. Why not? <laughs> so, what I gotta do is disassemble this front end so I got room under there, and then I'm gonna build a, a, uh, a jig, like a little frame, and then use the come along, probably from right here, down to my frame and chick -a -chick -a -chick -a -chick -a -chick and bring this gap back down. And then with some tube, I will reinforce that so it doesn't bend ever again. Get it all squared up, weld it all in, and have a stronger frame from what it was, and hopefully level. <laughs> deep now got all that taken apart whole front end sitting over there I know what you're saying why are you doing that Ernie I just gotta do something right now it's a good grocery getter you know pick up kids from school goof off around here in the neighborhood but we want to take it out to the Mojave have fun and when I first got it, that's what I used to do. But uh, that little issue right there, you gotta do something about it. I got nothing to lose. I'm gonna make it right as good as I can get it out here with my calibrated eyeball. And we're gonna have some fun with it. So the plan is, is to build a jig right here with some two by four metal, uh, three eighths wall. Build like an H pattern there with some um, with some metal coming up, some tubes coming up. I probably end up welding it here down to the tube on the bottom, and up here in the front I'll support it all, and up here I'll come with the come along, and then bring this down. Uh, it's got some plating underneath here, like on the other side. And uh, I'll probably cut that out to make this bend a little easier. And then when I get this down to where I want it, level, as good as level as I can get it, and I'll come back here and weld up some bracing here on the backside as well. Make it real strong. That's the plan. Got the plasma cutter. I don't usually use it because that thing makes a lot of noise. 
air compressor. Piss off the neighbors. It's getting late too. I usually only get loud back here from like 9 a.m. till about three or four. Right now it's already going on four, so. I want to piss off the neighbors. <laughs> Anyhow, that's my little dealio I got going on here. Got it all tacked together. Plan is to put that beam I just cut out right here and then tree it up and then cross member the same thing the other side. Then weld one of these here and come along and uh, bring it down. Hello everybody, got super sketch going on right now. I had no other choice, so I had to do it myself. I went to several different places to try to get this thing, uh, you know, bent back into squarish, but uh, nobody wanted to do it. One guy wanted this ungodly amount of money and uh, not gonna pay it. Anyhow, that's what I came up with. I'm YouTube certified, so we'll see if this works. I think it'll work. It doesn't need much. I left all the fenders and the hood on. So as you can see where it's bent here. A couple other spots. So when I bring it down, it'll probably soak all that up. Hopefully, if not, I'll take everything off and then do it over again and see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen. But on the flip side, I have nothing to lose. Just out here screwing around the backyard anyways. I got like two and a half hours into it yesterday afternoon. That includes tearing, tearing down the front axle. And about another two hours today putting this little contraption up. And then uh, we're going to bend it down level as I can get it. My floor is not level. I mean, it's the levelest part of this whole yard. So it's like, you know, a little bit. Got a small little grade, but I'll compensate um should work i cut out the uh i don't know if you can see it from there this is the bent piece from inside on the frame let's look up here there so i cut that out that's where it bent at and uh everybody who thinks that they got like a good solid piece from the factory there on the inside of their on the inside of their frame this piece i just measured it three thirty seconds of an inch so it's not that thick so that's probably why it bent i think the frame is the same as this eighth of an inch but the inside is nothing Anyhow, that's pretty good to know, I guess. Uh, I got these welded in here at one inch and a one inch and the same thing the other side, just so it doesn't move. I got it set right to where my pivot point is. So I start cranking it down, it should go. Use an old metal, that's the old weight bench we had coming in handy right now. But uh, let's start cranking, see what happens. So no matter what happens right now, I'm going to get it down as close as I can get it. I don't expect perfection, nor is this a race car or anything like that. So as long as uh, it gets straight-ish 
and I can get that kink out as best I can and then I'll reinforce it with some of the steel here I'll reuse this and uh, make it stronger than it's ever been before Let's see what happens I think it's working. Took out like one degree already. Hot damn, diggity dog. Feel it when you're tapping it. Another degree. All right, so I think that's good. Yeah, we're afraid about spring back now. Let's see how much we get off spring back.
Yeah, I'll take that. That kink went away too. Well, for the most part. I'll bang it up here. I'll use some of that. This whole area is gonna get one. Well, not so sketchy anymore, I guess. <laughs> yep, I would say that's pretty damn good. Not back around the backyard, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think this went back. Hood gap is good again. Bitchin' stitching. All right. Time to cut all that out. Reinforce the frame. What I'm gonna do right now is to pull the hood, both fenders, so I got access to that frame. And I'll start cutting, grinding, and welding. Time to get busy. Check it out. That is pretty right on, I think. Almost on. I'm happy with that. According to my calibrated eyeball, that's a go. Oh, in case you're wondering how I did that, uh, got some two by fours by three eighths wall. I got 30 feet of it and it was barely enough. I got that a couple little chunks back there. 30 feet did it. I had them cut them in half. So I bought them in 10 footers. So cut them in half, five, 10, 15, 20. And I just made an H out of it. And then I uh, cut that to fit. And the same thing on the other side. And I started using uh, pieces from the scrap pile. Weight bench. Yep. And I got to come along. I have a come along. Hooked it up there. Harbor Freight. Another Harbor Freight. And then just start cranking around on it um and then on that front piece i didn't put a whole lot of welds on there i just that was just to keep it in there that way when i bent this down that this didn't come down anymore it was just to keep it from going in farther down when i pulled on this and that one you know i put a, a an inch weld on that side and an inch weld on that side and that seemed to be sufficient reuse this this metal so i'm going to when I take this apart, cut it, those pieces probably go scrap pile. But these five footers, I'll put them in my garage and uh, save it for another, another project in the future. Just cut my jig out of there. Drug it out. Nice. Got a little dealio right there. We'll fix that up. Still got a little dimple there. But shoot, I'll take it. So right now, gonna cut the battery box up free, and then I'm gonna put a nice piece right here. Gonna be fun. Then after that, we take care of the brake. And then sometime next week, we'll put it in the lockers. And then after that, we'll go for a ride. Got done. I just got done with this right now. 
uh, I was throwing some etching on there. And I was like, oh, I better, better start videoing this. Forget, almost forgot it. <laughs> Anyhow, this is what it is. Uh, I probably should have went a little smaller, probably to there to there, but I was in the zone. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of overkill, but I doubt if this is going to bend in this spot ever again. It'll bend everywhere else, I think. Got it on both sides. Boxed it all in. Here, on the bottom. It's my two bolts for the fender. Bolt into there. I took out the radiator because back here I noticed there's a bunch of rust, so I cleaned it all out. Threw some more etching down there. It's quitting time right now. It's like 4 p.m., so. I'll let this dry overnight and then I'll shoot it with the can of OD and, uh, and then I got to take care of this This is bugging me so I got the gasket so I was just gonna pop this out put a new gasket in but uh, I think since I'm there I'm just gonna reroute this exhaust system uh, I'll leave this here like the old man put it but I'll tuck it up more I'll probably cut it off there and just put pipe in and then to the back I'll put that muffler just to give me a little bit better chance on off-roading when I do some rock crawling if I ever do rock crawling which I probably will <laughs> then I'll do the same to the other side I'm gonna take off this Fender get access. Those are my two bolts that you see on the other side. Uh, take this off, get an access, redo that exhaust. Uh, come in here and start messing with that brake. This brake needs to go here. So hopefully it'll line up with the stock one that's already in there. And then I just have to massage it a little to get it to work. Get that in there. Then we can drive with one leg that we're supposed to. No more fancy footwork. But if that don't work, I gotta figure out how to put a, a dual reservoir master cylinder right there. You can see how the hump goes in and out. Right here is where the steering column goes. Um, so I'd have to build something here, which I don't really want to do. You know, I just want it to be nice and easy. <laughs> but that'll be plan B. Hopefully plan A will work, line right up and uh, off we go, hopefully. Um, I got a question from Schnitzhaus. He want to see more of the drivetrain. He's building something just like this. So let's go underneath and check it out. <clears throat> So you wanted to see where the four-wheel drive comes out up right here, and that's where it comes through, and the axle would be right here. So this is where it comes through. I gotta build some uh, skid plates here, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go from this plate with my two bender or up here maybe, and come back like that with a tube and then put a plate with tube all the way down. There's my brake system. Let's get a good shot for Schnitzos. Got room for the exhaust if I had a stock manifold to come down. Schnitzos was asking if I had to cut the firewall to put this V6 in there with the TH350. Uh, no, I didn't have to cut it. Or the. Ow. My other Jeeps too that I run 350, uh, that I run V6s in them, they don't have anything cut. What you might have to cut is here. 
uh, right up in there where the gear shifters are at you'll have to do some finagling in there but for the most part there's no cutting on the firewall you see there's a nice gap in there you also want to know if there's a two-piece um, shaft nope it's one piece shaft This is a better shot of the jig that I made. Two by four by three eighths wall. A cross member. I had these guys welded to the frame at my pivot point. Spare parts, spare metal. And it worked. Got that sucker good enough continue this on the next one thanks for watching